Oh, hi. I must say, hi. Thank you. That is a warm welcome. Guys, he smells really good. <laughs> I must say, it's nice to meet you, Jimmy. You look very different on TV. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a little work done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a good surgeon. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's great that you're here. Did you see the prom proposal we just did? I did. Wasn't very that sweet. Cute? Congratulations. So cute. Did you go to your prom? I feel like you would definitely have gone to a lot of proms. You know, in England, you don't have proms, but we would have uh, the occasional school disco. Which sounds very 80s. Funky. Though. Yeah. Wow. Pretty funky. Uh, and I only went to one because it was the greatest uh, two weeks of my life leading into the worst day of my life. The most popular girl in our school, Rachel Gould, who I had an enormous crush on. Okay. Everybody had an enormous crush on. I was 13. Uh, so was she. And she asked me to be her prom date or her school disco date and two weeks before. And so I just was made up. I was on cloud nine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was sort of planning the rest of our lives and, you know, <laughs> children's names and such. And then the day before, she told me she was only joking. Oh. And she went with Sebastian Lipiat instead. Can I and everybody knew like, we were like royalty at that point in school. Everyone knew that we were going together. So then I couldn't go and ask someone else. So I had to go by myself. And my mom <laughs> said, Do you want me to come with you? Uh, I said, mom, no, no, mom. you can't. That makes I'll it make... worse. Can it I just really... say one thing? F you, Rachel Gould. <laughs> to her a few years Did ago. You? And, and uh, I reminded her of this, and she, she didn't remember, and she said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, She's too 13. little, too late, Rich. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if only she could see you now. Now that I'm king of England. Right? <laughs> you were on Sons of Anarchy for a very, very long time. Yes. You rode a motorcycle. I did. Do you, did. do you still ride? You actually rode, right? You're into motorcycles. I did. You know, it's funny. Um, on Sons, we did it for so long, and we all sort of fancied ourselves little, you know, outlaws. A so real biker kind, gang. We kind of got the experience of being a little biker club for that seven years. So I rode everywhere at 100 miles an hour, everywhere really? I went. And after, uh, after seven years, I realized, you know what? You really got away with a lot. I mean, I, I had Were a... you dangerous? Uh, yeah. I was. But you know, it's so funny. I, the, <laughs> the, uh, I only had one really uh, an unfortunate incident, and it wasn't my fault at all. I was on the 101 coming in on, uh, like, by Universal, and I'd, I'd just ridden, like, 300 miles up north, like, ah, the whole way. Right. And down, no problem. And I was just... I came over to get onto the exit, because I was one stop away from where I was getting off the freeway. And this... Uh, brand new giant white Lexus comes barreling on into where I was, like really aggressively towards me. And I looked over at the car and there was nobody in the driver's seat. It was a self-driver? No. One of those self-driving cars? No, the lady that was driving it had dropped her mobile phone oh. and was bending over to pick it up. And there were two bikes, I mean, two cars in front of me pinched in, so I couldn't get by, and an SUV here. And I thought if she hits me and I hit this SUV, yeah, it is it's game over. over. Yeah, it's over. That's a wrap. So I said, what do you do in this situation? So I went, bam, and slammed my bike into her car. And my, the peg that my foot was on hit her front wheel and bent under the bike. And I looked down, I mean, I felt, and I said, oh dear, I, I've just ripped my foot off. And I looked down, and thankfully my foot was still there, but the peg was not. <laughs> and so after, aye, aye, aye. after that experience, after seven years of getting away with it, I thought after I finished the show, maybe I should take a take, little sabbatical take a break. from riding. Take a break, yeah. yeah. Well, I listen, I feel like we have a lot in common. I've never been in a motorcycle accident. I got my license to impress my husband who loves motorcycles, and I never rode after I got the license because I'm not good at it. But I know you like motorcycles. I like my husband who likes motorcycles. Mm. You like cooking. I love cooking. I also love food. Here's my Whoa. question. Whoa. Can we go three for three? I'm really obsessed with animals. Do you like animals? I do. <laughs> do you 
to see a picture of my cat? I got a cat. Of course I do. I got a cat who is the homie. I've had him 17 years. I actually saved Legit his life. Legit a picture of your, wait, what? You saved his life? Oh, I did. Oh, he's very can cute. We, can we see that there? You got it? Yeah, hold it. Yeah. There he is. Wait, how did you That's save his homie. life? He was born on my roof on Valentine. Well, no, he was born about a week before Valentine's Day, 2000, in 2000, 17 years ago. And I was going to bed one night and I heard this kitten crying. What sounded like kitten, but it was pouring with rain. And in order to get onto my roof, I used to have to climb onto the garage and there was about a three foot gap and the roof was about two feet higher than the garage. So I'd have to run and like Superman style jump over. You got onto your roof a lot of times previously before having heard the kitten? Yeah, you know. It was think, like a regular think, thing. Think just about like, life, go to the you roof. know, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, okay. And so, uh, so yeah, so, but it was uh, 11 o'clock at night pouring with rain. I said, I'm either gonna kill myself or the cat. So I set my alarm for 5 a.m. the next morning because I was so worried about this cat. And the alarm went off and I thought, why am I late for work? And I remembered the cat. So I climbed up, no cat up there, went back into the garden, no cat there. Climbed up just to check once more. And he was lying, I thought it was a piece of wood. He was lying like this, half submerged in a puddle. Aww. And I picked him up and my heart broke. I literally just started crying. I thought, this is the end of my life. There's no chance for happiness for me now. I've killed this cat. <laughs> and he, um, he was completely solid, like rigor mortis had set in. And he went, and no sound came out. I said, he is alive. So I brought him down and put him under my armpit, trying to warm, warm him, him up. Warm him up, right? And, uh, and I didn't have a car or anything at that point. I was, totally broke, but uh, so I ran to the vet and got to the vet. You ran to the vet? Yeah, with the cat. How far away was the vet? Like two miles away, two and a half miles oh, away. With yeah, the cat right. underneath my armpit. You're kidding. And, uh, and then the vet wasn't open because it was six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't catch a break. No, really, I know, it was a bad day. So then uh, two hours later, the, they opened and he's like flopping around. They said he's 100% he's not gonna make it. And I said, <sighs> That is an incorrect analysis, my friends. You are gonna give him a shot and put him in an incubator and do anything you can do. You're saving this cat's life. And they said, all right, crazy. Uh, we'll do what we can. <laughs> Four hours later, they said he made a complete recovery. Come pick him up. <laughs> Rachel, you blew it. You blew it. I'm not getting drawn into this mess. And there's an army of you. There's only one of me. I haven't had a fight for years. And I'll talk, I'm happy to talk, but there is no way that I am fighting. Oh, it's thank so, you. so, so, so good. Thank you, we it's had a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I bet you did. Like, just visually, and the acting is great, and everything. But speaking of visually, you had a very nice frame in this film. <laughs> and I don't say that to objectify you. I say that <laughs> because I care about the human condition. I'm it's not sufferings, sure about those it's victories. <laughs> You know, sometimes you go to a photo shoot and, and they're somebody like, Try convinces this. you to do this. And yeah. they're like, you gotta break out of your comfort zone, well, bro. Yeah. I'm you not know what, sure though, if I need to get that far out of my comfort zone. Can I tell you zone. something? Nobody's looking at the leather pants. Oh, okay. They're looking <laughs> at the upper area. And let me ask you this, because like, I feel like you were even bigger in King Arthur, because yeah. I don't, not that I really remember what you look like with your shirt off, but <laughs> just because I watched it so recently and dreamt about it. Um, <laughs> what, what did you do to get in that kind of shape? Um, like seriously. I did a, I did a lot of fighting. Uh, did some uh, Muay Thai, some boxing, some Jiu Jitsu. Guy, the director, is big into Jiu Jitsu. But mainly, uh, I set myself a goal of doing a thousand push ups a day minimum. So, a for thousand? A, yeah, for six months. And I'm a little bit crazy. If there's a day where yeah, I didn't sure, get I can the understand. thousand, <laughs> then I would punish myself and have to do 2,000 the next day. Oh, so, honey. Yeah, you know, you got to get after it. I, the well, tiger. Listen. I, it did great things for you and for the movie. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword is in theaters May 12th. Do you love clicking buttons and subscribing to things? Then click the button to subscribe to my channel and you'll finally be happy.